Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear, and today I'm going to talk to you about XGen and specifically two things. We're going to be talking about how we can export geometry as a custom archive and a few tips around that. And we're also going to quickly discuss density and what happens with density when you're trying to work with very large terrains and things like that. A lot of times you can't get that density value low enough. Um, your, your, your objects are just flooding your scene and you can't get that value low enough. So I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks to kind of work around that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to export this piece of geometry out as an XGen archive. Always make sure that your piece of geometry is at the origin. If not, you're going to have an offset in there. So you want to make sure that the geometry is sort of lined up, pivot points down at the bottom, everything's at the origin, and you're good to go. So you jump up to the modeling section and go generate and export selection as archives. Now what I want to do is I've already given this a name flower. It's going to my local um, user documents um, XGen archives. And I want to use the level of detail. I want to have this create LOD so that the background geometry is very low resolution. The mid-ground geometry is, you know, obviously kind of a mid-value. And then I want to have the full resolution or the high resolution in the foreground. So I'm going to turn on the automatic poly reduction. And I'm going to set this value to a little bit higher than the standards. I have it set to 90 and 60. And before I export this out, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and make sure that this piece of geometry um, can be reduced because the automatic poly reduction relies on the Molly Maya poly reduce tool. And if it can't run a poly reduce because there's non manifold geometry or there's some issue with the geometry, XGen will export out that archive and not generate the LODs and not tell you that it didn't generate the LODs. So the LOD stuff won't work and you won't know why. So I always sort of pre flight my geometry or give it a quick check just by running that Maya. Um, under the mesh menu, poly reduce. So you run poly reduce on there, you can see bam, just like that, it kind of reduced it down. So I know that, that that piece of geometry can be reduced. If the poly reduce tool failed, all you really have to do to fix it and make sure that it can clean it um, is just to run an optimized cleanup. And more likely than not, it's going to be something like non manifold geometry that's creating that poly um, reduce tool to fail or error out. So just run the optimize cleanup options and get the geometry kind of kind of scrubbed clean and then make sure that poly reduce tool works and then go off and do your XGen export. So we'll again go to generate, export selection as archives. I'm gonna to set to 90 and 60. We're gonna to save to our local directory, you say export. We'll go ahead and we'll hit save. You can see it goes through, it thinks about it. And in a few seconds, we're gonna have our XGen archive saved out. So after we've done that, I always like to take a snapshot of that. So I'll just hit my print screen button and we'll just grab a little, little image of that guy. We're going to save this out as a PNG file to that same um, same directory. So in my documents, XGen, and I'm going to save this as flower PNG since it's the same name as the archive we just saved out. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and jump back into Maya. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead. Oh, one last thing that I, you might want to do is if you look in that um, the XGen archives ABC, you'll see that it made the flower low, the flower mid, and then the original flower. And you can see the, the file sizes on these guys stepping down. So that's showing you these Alembic file um, preview files that Maya uses, um, you know, that they're obviously three different sizes there. So that's another way of checking that that LOD actually, that actually did, did do something, right? So with that done, what we want to do is we want to put these flowers on this relatively large piece of geometry compared to my compared to my grid there. And this is where the density problems are going to start to uh, to show up. So if we go ahead and we jump into our XGen create description, so we'll add onto this guy a custom archive. Everything's set there. We'll go ahead and we'll create that guy. You can see that as soon as this comes in, it says it's empty. Obviously, we haven't added in an XGen archive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and say add, and we'll jump out to document XGen archives, and we just made this one called flower. So we'll open that guy up. Yes, we'll bring the shaders in. You can see that our little icon shows up there, which is great. And you can see that, yeah, it's really, really densely populated. So how do we work around that? Well, there's a couple things that you can do. One thing that you can do is you can drop this density down, right? And I always actually put this density down to a low value before I add the archive in, just in case it does flood it with a ton that it doesn't choke your machine up. The problem is, you know, you might want to get this really low. You start dropping it down 0.01 and then you go to 0.001. And as soon as you do that, everything disappears. The smallest value that you can have is 0.05. So what happens if 0.05 you know, isn't low enough for you. I'm sorry, it's 0.005 is the smallest value you can have. So if that value isn't low enough for you, you know, how do you how do you work around that? And also notice that the slider then is like super sensitive. I start to move that slider and 
you know, before I know it, you know, I've choked Maya up. It's trying to fill that in with, a, you know, an insane amount, right? So one thing that you can do is if 0.005 does get you low enough and you want that slider not to be quite so sensitive, you can do a couple things. You could go in here and just change this to, instead of being a value of one, just put it to 0.01. So now if you do that, you know, my 0.005 range doesn't change. My minimum amount of flowers hasn't changed. But now my slider at least is a little, you know, a little more um, usable, or I could even put this to 0.001 and then make that slider even, even more, you know, usable. So it just makes the slider not be quite as sensitive. So you can start to, to work with that. So that's, that's one way of getting around this. Another way of getting around it is to actually change um, the size of the geometry before you do your binding operation. So this is a pretty cool little trick. Let's go ahead and just bring this file back up. So we're going to say recent files. We'll grab this, this guy here. So the binding operation basically binds it in, in units in, in, in the size that the object actually is. And it looks to the scaling value of your geometry. So what we want to do is we're actually going to scale this geometry down 100 times smaller, freeze the transforms, and then scale it back up. Um, so that's a really fast, easy way to make it seem really small. Actually, we're not going to do that's a thousand times. We'll go 0.01. So it's kind of down really small, freeze this guy. And now if we do our binding, just like we did before, so we'll create this new XGen description of our custom geometry, create that guy, go in here and add in our cool flower, which is right there. So we do that, we bring our shaders in, great. So there's our flower. So now we can take this piece of geometry, right? And we can scale back up times 100. And if we jump back to XGen here and re re regenerate that guy, you can see now at a value of one, we've got really low density in our, in our, in our, in our plants here. So now that slider just works a little bit better. So it's a pretty cool little trick. It's a pretty good little hack. So let's go ahead and look at what that LOD was doing for us. So if you remember before, we can just get rid of that grid. Just see that guy. You can remember that we, we made those LODs and we can say, are, well, are those LODs actually working? So you've got these min max depths here. So if we start to drop this down, you can see those are all the low res guys. So we'll push that low res range sort of back there in the background guys. And then this guy is going to be our mid. So you'll see that in the, the foreground here, those, those guys just pop into the full high res. So, you know, that's, that's the power of those LODs. So now we have a scene that's, that's a good bit lighter. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about really quickly is painting masks. And this is um, kind of in line with the density here. If you go in here and you say, I want to paint a mask. I don't want to have flowers maybe in a circle region or something. You jump in here, you say, create map. Great. We'll create this mask. That's all well and good. The problem is if you double click on this brush and it's set to its standard brush, you know, we'll increase the size of this guy. This brush actually never goes to fully black. And this is a really weird thing, but essentially like if you think that you're painting out an area where there's not going to be any, any, any flowers there and you hit the save button, watch what happens. There's still flowers inside of that region. And the reason that is, is because the feather actually never goes to full black, right? So if you really want to mask an area out, you have to use the brush without any of the feathering on it. Or you have to create your own, load your own map in, your own custom bitmap, which you can do on this little icon right here. Um, so now that I've done that with the black uh, mask without a, without a feather on there, you can see that it's gone ahead and done what it needed to do. So those are just a few things um, when working with XGen that hopefully will help you be a bit more successful. We looked at the way to make sure your geometry is ready to be exported out, make sure it's at the origin, make sure that poly reduce tool works on it, take that snapshot to add that PNG file in there so that you get the nice display of what the archives actually are. And then we talked about a couple ways of working around density. Number one being if you're not too concerned about the min value, you can just use you know that trick that I showed you on the mask files, a multiplier to make the slider not quite as sensitive. Or you can scale that piece of geometry down, freeze the transforms, and then scale, do the bind and then scale back up. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys, and um, it helps you be more successful with XGen. Thanks a lot for checking out Maya Mondays, and please hit the subscribe button and, and join in. Cheers, everyone.